What's up YouTube, my name is Andreas and in this video I'm going to talk about Showtime Hold'em. After Split Hold'em rotated out of Poker Stars, we now have a game that is lower raked but has a similar taste to it, that it's now a mixed game format that's new to everyone, so everyone has the same chances of succeeding at this game that will be only there for a limited time. I haven't played a hand yet, let's have a look at what we can do at this game. All right, enough theory, let's try and play some poker here. We got Queen Deuce Offsuit, we have, we're facing a race. Obviously we're gonna fold this hand, but we can see the first um, couple of features to this here. You can see that this guy now folded Ace and Offsuit and Queen 7, our hand becomes even worse because we removed the Queen over here. And now these guys have um, now new advantages when it comes to their knowledge about um, the cards basically that are down. So you can see that he calls a three bet, the board comes a three, five, usually you just check for removal, it doesn't really matter as much, just the queen of uh, 10 of diamonds is out there, and then the deuce of diamonds, so flush draws would have less outs and would less be inclined to check call here on the flop. Now you already they also see that what people fold against you, so that um, becomes quite some interesting dynamic. So apparently um, the guy folded ace-10 suited here, which is obviously fine. And here we have no really advantages with the two-three offset, obviously we can't. So he folded ace-10 suited on this board, also knowing that his ace and 10 aren't live. So he has an easy check fold here, even easier than otherwise. And yeah, I mean, I guess we were gonna see a bunch of three betting in position and a bunch of good hands trying to just shove before the flop. Um, before your opponent can make a better decision in position. Now, so far, nothing special. Um, you, you get quite some information about your opponents when it comes to their first in ranges, of course. You got King 6 suited here, folded on this board. We got 6 9 folded. We got someone opening it up here. And they can now see that I fold the queen at offset on the button, nothing spectacular. We had a cold call from the small blind. And a queen five suited fold from the big blind. He also sees my queen, so his queen five suited gets much weaker. And the nine of spades, which removes some of his flush draw outs. So apparently cross space and NL100 rag is just testing out the game. And uh, I guess I'm gonna just add a new tag, which is gonna be um, Showtime Hold'em NL25. I'm gonna fold this queen offset from the cutoff. And you can already see, you know, this is right, really great because you can see what the first in ranges are in reality, and you always see by player and how how tight and how loose they are. It actually adds quite some interesting elements to the game. So yeah, three bet here from out of position, somewhat standard sizing. You see some two more cards revealed, the ten and the seven. He calls in position, and we have a nice high texture, which should be generally good for a three better. Also not too bad for the caller. Um, he jack folds king jack offsuit, and obviously we never see the winning hand, which is somewhat interesting. Now queen 10 offsuit, I'm gonna fold. The information of the king 7 won't do much. And I'm going to put the Excel file over to my second monitor meanwhile. I also open those Broadway um, suited hands, and as you can see, we got quite some information here. Um, we also know that these guys have been quite okay, and we see the king deuce of diamonds, which makes me definitely wanna bet the flop here. If he entirely missed the board, then he's gonna have a problem. And his cloak range, as you can see, has sometimes just entire whiffs, like the same as my board. So I think a stabbing sizing of our pot will work quite a bit there. Um, definitely an interesting hand as well. So no hearts out there, and uh, now with a three bet, I guess it's 
clear that we fold otherwise a little bit more connected it would have been fine for a min raise he race folds the check line suited surprisingly but um yeah i mean i'm not sure if that's really the play since there's no jack or nine dead only one spade dead i think that's card removal wise not too bad for your hand king six of sort of of course a fold 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 and folding this as well and a call so what i would do in the meantime is just check out how all the limits play out and then for example if you see that people are playing reasonable i would personally just open a new table so we got four x open from under the gun we have a nine that so we're going to fold our pocket nines because we cannot hit as well um quite center fold remember your odds of flopping a set will go up if you have pocket nines if there's no nine dead there's additional a cards that you know of so um your odds will become definitely better i'm gonna fold here with the ace five also the five is that And another fold here with the ace five offsuit. So far, nothing's. I mean, he didn't open a button with jack six suited, which. I mean, yeah, it's like borderline for sure. And there's a six that Jack is still alive. So I'm not sure how relevant the six is if there's all diamonds live. But you see he's also an ace folded, so he's not gonna get three bit as often anymore because he has uh, he sees an ace here. So I think this could just uh, lean towards being an open at the moment, but it's gonna be close. Meanwhile, I'm just playing um, Second table here on the side, fold the threes, eight suited. And I'm actually gonna open up another five cent, 10 cent table with $5, 50 big ones deep. And then switch over the format as soon as I get in the big blind here. Go to the two table mode. So you guys have a little bit more action. We have a 9x. And uh, it's interesting. We cannot hit the 9 anymore. We've got queen high. And he has a lot of ace highs now going into that. But I think with two nines dead, I'm going to have to make a fold. So yeah, they always see when you fold to three bets. That's really, really interesting. Everything they don't see is when you are the aggressor and you get them to fold. That uh, creates some interesting dynamic, I would say. Also interesting, you didn't flag call the 9-7 suited against undergun MP, which I think is completely fine, but some people, of course, would just call here. And I'm gonna sit out the next blind and then show you guys the other two tables so you get more action this, this way. <clears throat> so it also is of course a fold. King then also fold a small blind now. Okay, of course against the race. 
And everyone seems to be more or less fine. Crosby now with the cold call. And check eight suited. It's like the first, obviously, weird play. He limps under the gun with check eight suited. So limps under the gun, check eight diamonds. And then folds versus 4x, cold call, big blind. Here we have uh, an interesting spot. I'm actually gonna go to two tables and then show you guys this hand here. We've got ace queen here. We three that before the flop. It's really weird because there's a queen dead and ace dead, so we block our hand. Uh, obviously, he can only beat us with pocket jacks. Um, we call the three, but before the flop. Um, diamonds are one, two out there. Don't need to protect by much. Money is obviously going in. Got 90% against 8-9 suited. Which had less outs or not? We have a 10 dead here. Um, other than that, he really needed to rely on fold equity as he couldn't have won that much otherwise. So get it out of this game. So it seems like all regulars and want some fun players in there. And it seems like the limit below that, 5 cent, 10 cent, is much better at first to get started. So you guys can basically do it. I'm not going to try to flop a set because the 3 is dead, of course. And here I get a 9. There's a 9 dead already. No point in continuing with the 9, um, 7 here at all. So this is a mix of stud and no limit holder, which I like a lot because I've been playing stud online quite a bit. And now trying to figure this game out. So one of the advantages over split hold in the first game of this series is that we definitely, um, I'm gonna fold here. And I'm gonna cold call. We basically see We have less rake, right? I mean, we don't have two boards. We only rake once. Uh, now he knows that, you know, it's almost impossible to make trips. And he holds king 10. We don't hit a jack very often. And I guess the initial raiser has some advantages and doesn't have to show his hand. Now we're playing deep here on the other table, which might be, you know, much better. I'm gonna find it out in the future. Uh, King six suited on the button. A little bit short here, but we have a blocker. I mean, it's not good enough, most likely. If you see him continuously raising, maybe we can put in some three, but then see what the flop brings, etc. Have some more info advantage. It's still going to be mostly like regular hold them, right? And also we can see the first weird play is definitely going to be on the VIP side of things with the ace5 offset open and the call down. This guy is also weird as he didn't 3-bet the ace-king. So no, 3-bet this king offsuit versus MP. Well, the ace of course. And what else can you get from it? I mean, I'm gonna think about the game quite a bit um, after this video and I'm gonna make some follow-up videos where I dive into more strategy or strategic aspects that I found out after some playing and then also the common mistakes play people make after the first days um, of the game. And as I said, it's a big opportunity. I mean, the rake is normal. Of course, we're more shallow. So that usually means you, you're not gonna have as big of a win rate because of the 
stack sizes. And uh, here we're gonna have an easy re-raise. Like this guy's capped and we're only worried about him. Ace Jack suit is quite a good hand for 20 big blinds. Um, we have an ace block, I see that, but the hand itself is still quite good. Um, so question is how much are we gonna make it? Oh, wow, everyone's calling. If you followed a6 offsuit, that's not so good for me. Obviously calling. 54% <laughs> three-way. So, I mean, I don't know what is gonna be worse, but they're both gonna be VIPs for today. As they donated a little bit. And you can already see, you know, some, some stuff that's happening. People assume, okay, whatever, a clean jack, king jack. Let's get in 20 big blinds and you obviously have quite an edge. That way, when people gamble more than they would, for example, if they played no, uh, not only with 20, 10 cent, 25 sum, or 5 cent, 10 cent, there's gambling quite a bit more. King seven suited from the cutoff. I'm gonna open with a king dad here, another king dad here, which might not make this hand an open, but let's find out. Um, still gonna actually. Queen five, queen eight, three. It might be a bad seabed because I cannot even hit a, a king anymore. But also remove quite some hands, except for obviously the queen x. The king queen is almost impossible. But then he has queen jack, queen ten, eight x, and then just relying on some ace height fold equity basically. On the seven, not the worst river of all. And uh, I'm just gonna check it back, and he has a queen nine. Might have been a bad C bet with the removal for sure. I mean, he's always gonna have a lot of misses too, so maybe I should just third bet and then polarize and turns and rivers a little bit and bet bigger. So, given that I cannot hit my top, I could have hit the backdoor flush shot card. That's like one of the reasons why betting might not be that terrible after all. So, you're gonna see maybe some cards here. He opens like almost everything. So I don't think like three bet folding will be terrible. We see also a lot of small three bets coming. Small four bet, click four bet, really weird play. You can see that top pair, top kicker is removed here. Seven four, seven four, okay. Not much happening on the right. And uh, they folded high cards and who won? Lose. Oh, what? Did he just? Oh, he folded. Okay, stiff hand now. Pocket fives without information. Hmm. All right, gonna fold. I fold king three as well. Not much gonna change. I think like whenever you have a very weak hand or something that you will barely open and then you see one blocker that's against you, you might wanna just fold it. Here it's funny, we see the two flush cards removed and we also see a barely nitty fold by the ace eight suited. So we can, I don't know, sometimes you can level your opponent and just make a very nitty fold and then the next time you're just three betting super light or something like that because they see your folds all the time which is also very interesting. Could be some leveling going on. That's another thing that I would think about. Um, pocket five seems a big blind. Obviously if we don't see a five, we're gonna have an easy call. Um, pocket pair values goes up, but there's many pocket pairs higher than ours. And uh, 
Mm, I could see three betting work here, but I'm just gonna call. There's a six stat, there's a two stat. Check high board is actually not that bad for me. I'm definitely gonna have a call here on the flop. King is dead as well. Doesn't mean much. He battles again. We're gonna have many better hands. A lot of jack hacks that we always call in turn with. I can get away with the uh, fives, I guess. I'll get away from this hand. And it seems like this doesn't get tracked at all, but I basically wrote down the amount of money that I have before starting this session. And we have four seven then, six three then, any gems. I mean, this could be somewhat lighter. There's so many board pairs that is five, a six three, so each of those and then four seven as well. He goes ahead and goes all in with the ace king and he just calls king queen because he hates money. Uh, weird guy here is obviously as well <clears throat> so if you get to really quick at this maybe you can four table this this could be totally fine and uh seems like uh, a fun game and definitely the same rake as, as uh, No Limit 25. It's just going to be short stack. That's a little bit of difference. If you're a short stacker anyway at NL25, why not just play this format, NL10, and see what happens. So we're 20 minutes in here. I'm going to wrap it up in after this orbit. You see a couple of more hands and then as I record more footage of me playing this game, I will update it in future videos. In this channel, there's gonna be a playlist about this game, similar to Split Hold'em. I'm gonna open a set suited and take it down as they have nothing. And uh, apparently everyone's sitting out here. So I'm gonna just sit out here as well. That's it. So I want to just show you guys a file here. I've just took uh, taken a couple of notes. Um, we have probably more call calling because we want to wait for some information. If people are opening wide enough ranges, as soon as they tighten up, it's probably going to be three better folding, um, similar to no limit hold'em, uh, high stakes. Basically, there's a high rake. So call calling in general is not a great idea with high rake at the micro stakes. And then I would also try to adjust three bet sizing because sometimes the uh, additional information we get from the dead cards is going to be quite relevant as well. And it's going to, uh, yeah, make us, for example, fold to a four bet chan more often because our equity with, let's say, ace queen is not as great. We can just fold to the gem and maybe more easily. And, you know, pocket pairs, um, they go up quite in value when it comes to like, uh, four bet jamming, I would say, because they get to see whether their pocket pair is live. So a pair of nines and tens, when it gets a three bet, you know, you just watch whether there's an ace dead, whether there's um, some uh, some of your card dead, maybe you cannot hit the set anymore, and then you can just get easily away from your hand. And then also in the big blind, you have all the information that you need if someone just opened into you. So it's actually then, quite okay to be defending um, with that shallow stack size with a bunch of hands uh, when the card removal is right so your defending ranges will also vary a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to Showtime Hold'em. As you can see the rake is not quite as high as in Split Hold'em so you know this might be an opportunity for people to grind up some bank rolls at the 5 to 10 cent limits maybe at the 10 cent 25 cent there will be more regulars playing. We'll find out that in the future. There will be more videos coming up about this format. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to hit those thumbs up down there and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content in the future. This has been Andreas. See you for the next one.